All right, let's talk about the loading and suspense. And to show you why we need this, I'm going to break our database connection. So I have an, so right now we can access our database from anywhere. So I'm going to delete this network access. So this is in your MongoDB Atlas under network access, and I'm going to delete this. So that means we cannot access our database from anywhere. Going back to our website, if I reload the home page, you notice this spinner is spinning and is trying to get the data. And what we have right now on the website is cached data. This is trying to connect to the database. And after a while, we will get failed to fetch the data. So we will not able to connect to our database. But if I open a new tab and let's say we want to go to our website for the first time. So I press enter. You notice I'm not getting anything and the spinner is keep going. So the whole website is blocked until we get some response from our database. This is not what we want. We want to prevent this and we want to show, for example, navigation, registration page and other parts of our website that doesn't need database connection. And there are two ways to do this. One is using the special loading file in Next.js or we can use the suspense component from React.js. So first, let's cover using suspense. Right now, I'm on the home page and that is page.jsx under app directory. First thing I want to do is to turn this whole thing into its own function. And you don't have to do this. This is just for the sake of example. So down here in the same component, I'm going to create an async function. I would call this posts list and we don't need any parameters. I'm going to cut everything in this home function or component and paste it here. So all I did, I moved everything into this other function from our home function. Now in here, we want to return this posts list. Let's just say posts list like this and close it. And going back to the website, we still have the same problem. So this will not solve any problem, but let's wrap this with another component. So I'm going to add the parentheses first and put this on different lines. Then we are going to use suspense from React. So I'm importing it up here and we want to wrap our posts list with this suspense component. So this component allows us to display a fallback until the children have finished loading. This is exactly what we want. We can provide a fallback on the suspense component that can take a component or a simple HTML element or any fallback. So in this case, let's just have a P tag that says loading. Now, if we go back to our website and reload, you notice the first thing we see is that text and our navigation, everything is working properly while our application is trying to connect to the database. So even if we close this one, open a new tab and then try to access the site again, we can get our application immediately and other components. And the only part that is being delayed is the component that needs the database connection. Now, let's say we want to go to an individual post page directly. So if I press enter again, you can see we are waiting for the result and we are stuck on this page in a sense. Of course, we could go to the show page here and then create another suspense, but we can approach this differently using the special document in Next.js called loading. So let's close this one back to the home page, and I'm going to undo everything here. So I'm going to put it back the way it was. All right, so this is our home page the way it was, and we can close this in fact. So in our app directory, which refers to our home page, I'm going to create a new document and I would call this loading.jsx. So the name of this document must be loading. Otherwise it's not going to work. Then in here, we want to return a simple React component. Let's say export default function and let's call it loading or whatever name you want to use. And let's return that same P tag and say loading. And that is our simple loading component. So again, the name of the document is loading. And right now we are placing it under the app directory, which is our homepage. Back to our website on the homepage, you can see we get the text loading. We can go to register, login, or any other page. And if we go to one of the individual posts page, again, we see the loading state and then our navigation. And after a while, we get our failed message, which is coming from this show page. So this message right here, we created in the previous video. 
So just by placing this loading.jsx under our app directory, it automatically applies to all our routes. So all the children of this app directory. So if you want a loading state that would apply to all the children of a folder, then you can use the loading file in the parent folder. Or if you want to have different loading states, you can wrap that particular component with a suspense component from React. And this loading document is essentially doing the same thing. So in our layout, we have this children prop and all the components go within this children prop, right? And next to yes, behind the scenes, we'll wrap this with a suspense component. And if you like to dig deeper and see how it looks and how it works, I recommend installing React DevTools. And using that, you can see the components that are being used in the component tree. And you can see we have a lot of components that Next.js is handling those behind the scenes. But at some point, you should be able to see your root layout, navigation, and all the components or pages you have. And down here, we have a loading boundary and also suspense. So these components are being applied to the component tree because we are using this loading.jsx. So if I place this loading.jsx under, for example, dashboard, that would apply to the pages in the dashboard folder. And that is how we can have a suspense or a loading state. So for the rest of the video, I'm just going to leave this as it is, and you can style it the way you want. You can even have some animation in here, for example, or any loading state you like, or even make this into a component. So for example, you can have a component called loader, and within that, you will have all your CSS and HTML, and then you can import that wherever you want to use the loading document or the suspense component, which then you can pass your loader component to the fallback prop of that suspense. All right, so that is out of the way. In the next video, we will talk about updating a resource or a blog post.